brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, the Holy Church sets forth for our edification one of those gospel readings that we know very well. In fact, this gospel reading, which is the gospel reading of the Good Samaritan, is so well known that there are even laws named after it. This is something that has become part of our culture. And we know what a Good Samaritan is. That we get. But, what did the Lord say at the very end of this parable that he told? Because the first part of the gospel is something that actually happened. A lawyer came, and we won't comment on lawyers, but the lawyer came and he was questioning the Lord and asking him these questions. How do I inherit eternal life? And he gives him then a parable. The reason that the Lord often spoke in parables was not to hide things, but was to make things more memorable for people. If we know a story, we can repeat it. Right? If you know that this parable of the Good Samaritan, as soon as we say Good Samaritan, you remember it. You remember this man. But let's look at what a Samaritan is, so we can, as the Lord says, go and do likewise in the last words of his speaking today. Samaritans were sort of half-Jews. The Jews hated them very much. And we see this still, unfortunately, in our world today. Strangers, we will always be kind to. Cousins, brothers, and sisters, we can always have a bad word for or say or feel some bad thing against those who are close to us. Those who are far from us, we will always be kind to them. This is our sort of strange approach to our relationships. Of course, it probably should be the opposite, but in any case, it's important for you to understand the symbolism here that the Samaritans were hated by the Jews and far away and bad people. They were bad. So if you understand that they were bad, then you see the strong irony that happens in today's gospel. First, this man is wounded by robbers. It says he goes down to Jericho, right? This is a low place. It reminds us of sin. The robbers, of course, are the sins that beat him up. We don't have to dwell on all of this symbolism. Probably we understand it quite well. Who passes by first? A Levite. This is the priest uh, uh, tribe. The priests come from this tribe of Israel. Then comes a priest. So the Levite must not have been serving as a priest at that time. This is always a very good gospel reading for us as priests to remember that it's not the office that you hold, but how you use it that you will answer the Lord for. Both of them ignore this man. See already the irony. The servants of God, those who serve at the altar, they should be the first to help, but they ignore him. Then comes this bad person, this Samaritan. And he, on the other hand, shows to be himself not so bad. In fact, to be good. And the Lord after he has explained how this man helps that person who is wounded, how generous he is to him, how he cares for him, then he says to the young lawyer, Go and do thou likewise. As I was preparing for this sermon, I was reading a few things, and I read a sermon by Archbishop Andre from Nova de Viejo in, in New York. He's a, he was very close to, the, uh, to Uptina during the uh, time right before the revolution, and ended up, quite miraculously, living through some very terrible battles and ended up there in New York. He was a married priest who was then widowed and became a bishop. In any case, he uses, I think, what is a very, very good metaphor for us to understand how are we to go and do likewise. It's, it's nice to hear that, go and do likewise, but how do we do it? He compares it to baby teeth. Everyone has baby teeth. The baby teeth come first, but if, for us to mature, for us to receive the mature teeth, the baby teeth have to come out. Now, it would be so nice if they just fell out, but most of the time they don't. They get very loose, and then they have to be somehow pulled out, which causes a bit of pain. This is a metaphor for what we need to do with our hearts if we're going to become like that good Samaritan. We need to replace the carnal heart that we are given with a transfigured heart, a transformed heart, the heart of the Good Samaritan, who served even a person he did not know, who saved even a stranger. And we do this just as we remove the baby teeth. They don't all come out at once, piece by piece, one by one. We have the opportunity to do good. Do we take it? 
If we do, then we've replaced a piece of that carnal heart that we have been given with a piece of the heart which is transfigured, like the heart of the Good Samaritan. And then the next time we have an opportunity to do, do good, do we take it? If so, we move forward spiritually. If not, we stay where we are, or likely we take a few steps back. So brothers and sisters, this idea of the baby teeth, which we can all so easily identify with, is very helpful for us. And I hope that you'll take it with you and understand that we don't become transformed in the blink of an eye, but step by step, or if you prefer, tooth by tooth. Piece by piece of our heart is replaced with the transfigured heart, with the Christian heart, with the heart of the Good Samaritan. Brothers and sisters, let's decide today that we are going to take those opportunities for good. We won't even have to seek them out. They will come to us. Every opportunity that we take, if we will replace a piece of our carnal heart with that transfigured heart which the Lord is calling us to today, then we will become more and more like that good Samaritan. We will be transfigured. We will be transformed into the true sons and daughters of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will inherit the heavenly kingdom. May the Lord grant this to all of us. Amen.